Okay, welcome to episode two of the Telltale Tart. So we actually tried to shoot episode two last week, but I'm like really in love with the song Cavalier Eternal by Against Me because like it's awesome. You should listen to it right now, except don't listen to it and then decide kamikazes are a good idea because they're not. Long story short, we attempted to make a list and bake something and we got three books in and then it all just went to hell. But that's actually totally awesome because thematically it makes total sense because the French introduced the art of the attempt into literature. If you want to know what that means, stick around for a little bit. And today, I am going to attempt to make a pie based on the classic French dish, clafoutis, which I'm doing a much better job, much better job, pronouncing this week than I did last week when I was smashed. Cut. Clafoutis. Clafoutis. Whatever the... Clafoutis. And I'm going to list my top five works of French literature. I'm going to roll the footage from last week because despite our drunkenness, we got some great shit. Because how is it possible to proceed with a firm step towards that which will not allow itself to be charted? <gasps> Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. <gasps> what is that from? Uh, death and... Death as Possibility from the Space of Literature by Maurice Blanchot, a.k.a. number five on our list of best works of French literature. And I read it's this all about how art and suicide are an attempt to master a supreme moment, whether that's total control of the human mind, art, or understanding of death, suicide. Thinking about those things repetitively gets you trapped in what Blanchot referred to as the nocturnal realm of fascination, which would be an awesome name for a metal band. Probably tallying at least three out of five things about this on this list are about suicide and dying and shit. I don't know if French people are depressing or I'm just fucking depressing, but if that's not something you in, you're into, you should just leave now. We busted out the motherfucking champagne because we are bringing you number four on our list of best works of French literature, <gasps> The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. I don't know if you can actually see that. Oh, there you go. Can you see it? That's number four. So, uh, this is another book that broke my fucking brain because I was the big enough dumbass to be like, hey, I should read this while I'm taking a fucking drama class. Albert Which Camus just... was all like, the actor understands the absurdity of life because the myth of Sisyphus is all about rolling that boulder all the way up the hill and then you just watch it roll back down again. Camus was all like, hey, newsflash, bitches, we're all the actor. The actor just embraces the fact that he's an actor a little bit more. Because we all just know that the universe is completely devoid of meaning and we're all gonna die. And you know what? You fuckers who are all like, oh, this is so depressing, I warned you. Speaking of theater and death, we're gonna talk about the motherfucking photograph and death as outlined in Camera Lucia by Roland Bart, by Roland Bart, by Roland Bart, by Roland Bart, by Roland. And he identified two elements of the photograph the studium and the punctum. The studium is the thing that's kind of an overarching cultural motif that we can all get, like, oh, there's a fucking mother and her son. And the punctum was the thing that just reaches through to the individual and kind of punctures you and wounds you. Speaking of which, I found a bunch of goddamn fucking random photographs from my childhood while I was rereading this, so Matt, let's identify the studium and the punctum in all of these fucking pictures. For this, a second. this is a, a father trying to show that he is a good father to his sons. Oh, uh, that's me and that? That's not his son. What makes a boy as a child? I'm a little bit sensitive no, about it. So. The studium in this is that it's trying to give us a scripted reality about a father and his male children. One female. Well, so, like, no, no, there's so, a female. That's so a there would be a punctum in this if you knew that were that was a female. <laughs> but the punctum in, in this is his smile. The smile is fake. The smile is fucking so fake that, like, it doesn't make sense. Matt, get your fucking hand off my leg. You Ugh, beach. Thank you. Welcome back to the present. That line is really shitty. Okay, so, shit. This is Clafouti inspired pie. I probably made every baked good under the fucking sun, but I've never actually made a pie before, so this might be as big a disaster as our tarts. Ah, shit! Well, I had to do laundry anyway. There's just something about flour, it just like, mm, this is me. Okay, this is from the Brita filter in my fridge. So it's very icy and healthy. There's like a very specific way you're supposed to mix all of this and not just all 
throw it into a bag. If I was making cookies, I would know this. I don't know how to make pie. Ta -ta 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 -ta. A little bit of salt and butter, motherfucker. This is perfect. I made it wrong. In terms, you're like supposed to add like the butter and like then pour the water over it while you're mixing it, and I just kind of threw it all in. So let's all cross our fingers that 30 minutes in the fucking refrigerator will make it act like pie crust. Number two on our list, he's not a big deal or anything. You know, he just like invented the genre I write in. Montaigne, motherfucker. This goes back to what I was saying about the French inventing the art, the attempt in a literary form. Uh, essay actually comes from a French word that I am not going to try to pronounce without Carrie here because I would fuck it up so bad, but it means to attempt. Because Montaigne didn't really know what he was doing. He just like fucked off to Bordeaux in his house and paced around on the balcony and just wrote about everything from like love to friendship to educating children to cannibalism. And he's one of the first people to be like, hey, like... A human being who's cognizant and who's in the world right now, what they're thinking matters. And you could call that narcissistic, but fuck that. It's human nature. Like, we're all just essentially like dogs watching other dogs on a TV screen, and we're just like, <gasps> that's another living entity that's like me. Holy shit. That's why YouTube came about, because we all just want to know what people existing in the same time as us are thinking. And, you know, I kind of wonder what's going to happen in 100 years with YouTube. Like, are people going to be, like, watching Trisha Paytas the way we're reading Montaigne? Probably not, but I'm going to try to make the filling, which is inspired by Kakuti. I drew from, like, an internet article about how to make good pie crust and just a recipe that I made, like, a few weeks ago for a dinner party for cheesecake. No wonder somebody gave you to a goddamn shelter! Get down! So I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, and I don't think you need to believe in God to be a good person, but I do think it's, you know, kind of important to have something that guides you morally. Which brings me to number one on our list. I don't have Jesus. I have something even better. Jean Valjean from Victor Hugo's Les Mis. This book is basically a how-to guide for being a human being. Anything that you need to know about, you know, Murphy, we talked about this. Stop it. Speaking of being good to people, and Upton Sinclair actually wrote is in his introduction to the work that as long as we live in a society that creates an artificial hell on earth for people, books like this will be important. And it's kind of beautiful, but really mostly depressing. But this book is still relevant. And I remember my friend Doran in graduate school, I was just venting to her about, you know, this dog that was abused, and I was like, what kind of person does that? And she says, like, somebody who's not a human being, you know, anybody can be born, anybody can breathe, but you have to meet specific qualifications to be a fucking human. And if you want to know what those qualifications are, I, I would recommend this book. I've got to give a shout out to my friend Jane. I feel like every time I talk to her, I'm like, Perry Smith talking to Truman Capote, like I'm just like no match for her class and intellect. So she, this is a great suggestion to make cloud booty. It is delicious, flavored pies, but what we have here is soup. And we cannot put soup inside the pie. So I am like, we need a lot more solid-ish ingredients. So I'm adding another half pound of cream cheese, another half stick of butter, and another half cup of flour. I added everything I told you I was going to add last time and it still didn't really do it. So I had to add two thirds more cups of flour, cup of flour, fuck off I'm drunk, and another stick of butter. And now it's like at the good texture of like the cheesecake, but I think like refrigerate it for like 15 minutes and stick it in the pie, it'll probably bake okay. But it didn't, like, the flavor is still there. It just, it needed a little bit more black cherry, so I added um, about two-thirds more cups of black cherry jam. Pie turned out awesome. I actually baked it for, like, an hour because, like, it actually took quite a while to bake, more than I was expecting. But holy shit, it's not, like, that sweet. It's not, like, a super, super, super sweet baked dish, but it's so good. For me... 
it was just like the perfect level of sweet. It's like creamy and tart and delicious. Um, I'm gonna refrigerate it like overnight just cause like it's a little mushy. This makes up for the shitty tart. We made Plow Food Tea great again! Look at these photographs. Like, what you can Look see. Look at this photograph!